nations of Babylon, the Babylonian traditions that have been tra had transcended all the way until this time, including Christmas. And many people, when you actually tell them the truth, when we sound the trumpet as we're doing now with truth, with Bible, and with history, they perceive it as hate. And anybody who perceives the truth as hate, hate the truth. And that is what we need to be freed from. The truth is going to set us free. Right, absolutely. So what we need to do is swim against the currents. Uh, we know that um, in, in uh, Roman Catholicism, in the era of Constantine, we know that it was in the 4th century that, um, that all these uh, changes into the, um, into the sound doctrine were made when we merged paganism with, uh, with Christianity uh, or, or you know, the early day Christian, the Messianics as we know them. So, but what does Yahweh say? When we're looking um, of how to serve Yahweh and how to live according to His Word, what does He say in Jeremiah, through the prophet Jeremiah, um, chapter 6, verse 16? It says, Thus says Yahweh, Stand in the ways and see, meaning look at the crossroads, and ask for the old paths where the good way is, and walk in it, and there you will find rest for your souls. Now, we can just look at a timeline, and we'll see that in the 4th century, all these things, the abominations that are going on today, um, they only date back 1,700 years. We can look at a timeline, and then we can look at when the covenant of Yahweh was established. And that is the ancient way. That is the old way. And if we walk down that way, that is where we're going to find rest for our souls. And this dates back to two, 2,000 to 3,000 B.C. approximately, uh, when the covenant of Yahweh was given. So if we just go by this verse, and we stand, and we ask for the old paths, why do we want the old past? Because we want to go back to the roots. You know, we want to go back, we want to go back to the heart of worship and, and know what, what Yahweh's word says. We want to go back to the Torah. We want to go to the back to the beginning of time. After the repopulation of the earth, like we saw, we want to follow Shem's line, not, not Ham's line and not Japheth's line. Right. Now, this is um uh, uh if anybody has seen the Bible series on the History Channel. This is the story of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, when the, uh, the three uh, Israelites um, that were amongst Babylon, they decided not to bow down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. Now remember, Babylon is always key when it comes to traditions. This was a new tradition being instituted in that time. King Nebuchadnezzar, he was full of himself, um, just like Nimrod was. And they were both kings of Babylon. And he's like, all right, so I'm going to erect this huge statue of myself. And when the music starts playing, everybody got to stop what you're doing and bow down and worship me. So that, as we can see, that is exactly what the people are doing. But the three Israelites that were there, they were faithful to, um, to Yahweh. What did they do? And this picture, it might not be how it went down um, uh, exactly, as this is just a dramatization. But if you see in this picture, they're with their hands up to the skies and they're praising Yahweh. And this is what Yahweh expects of us from these Babylonian traditions. Uh, Israel said no to Babylonian customs. Um, this, is, this, is, this represents the world. And this represents what his few are actually going to do. Because remember, the, the, the path to Yahweh is narrow. And only few um, are going to make it. And this is an exact representation of what we see today. Uh, in my job, everybody around me is following Babylonian customs when they're celebrating Christmas. And this is what I'm doing. And, uh, and, and, you know, and obviously I hope that everything I do is acceptable to Yahweh because, uh, you know, our righteousness is not self-proclaimed. Our righteousness comes from the Word. But um, uh, this is what Yahweh expects of us, to say no to Babylonian customs, just as these three uh, did in, in the book of Daniel chapter 3. The three, they were thrown into the furnace and not burned. Right, right, absolutely. Now, remember in the beginning, in the very beginning first slides, I was, I was pointing out to remember the name of the political government of Babylon, which was named Mystery. And so Paul understood this. Paul understood what was going on with these ancient traditions of um, Babylon. And he says in 2 Thessalonians 2, it says, For the mystery, which was the political uh, system of Babylon, of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. That is being set apart. That is right, that right there, that, that sentence right there is being set apart, learning the truth, learning the customs of Babylon, and saying no. Exactly what he just said about the Israelites saying no to the Babylonian customs. It's saying no, staying out of the way. 
and, and, and pay attention. It says, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the king, which is our Messiah, will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. Amen. The coming of the lawless one, which is the one from mystery, which is from Babylon, the Babylonian system of government, the mystery of lawless. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Hasatan, Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. And so, right there, it's saying that he's going to come with false signs and wonders, with all false signs and wonders. And so when Yeshua mentions that many will come to him and say, Father, Father, I have prophesied in your name. Father, I have done wonders in your name. And he said, depart from me, for I never knew you. Who are these people? Who are these people? The people that... These people are the people who have drank drunken from the golden cup, which Jeremiah 51 says that is Babylon. Yeah, yep. Amen. And remember, because they refuse to love the truth. Remember what I said. Many people feel that um, they perceive the truth to be hate. When we tell people about Christmas, they perceive it to be hate. And, we're, and we're, all we're doing is we're sounding the trumpet. Just as we read in the beginning, we're lifting up our voice and declaring the house of God their transgressions. So it says, because they refuse to love the truth, anybody who perceives the truth as hate, they hate the truth. And that is a position we don't want to be in. And, you know, and, that, and that's a very, very common thing, um, you know, misconception that has even, has even been since, you know, the time of Moses. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and, and Joshua, you know, and we read Joshua 24, 15. He, he even had this um, issue, and he says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve Yahweh, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which of your fathers served, which were on the other side of the flood. Key. That's key. That is key. The other side of the flood, that's from the times of Nimrod. Or the gods of the Amorites in those in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we, we will serve, serve Yahweh. Yahweh. And that is bottom line. How do we serve Yahweh? By observing, by giving reverence to the Torah, to the instruction, the way that He wants you to worship, the way He wants you to do things. It's not the way how we feel how we want to, um, you know, we want to worship Yahweh, you know, and that is the biggest mistake that even Israel did when they came out of Egypt. They said, we want to worship Yahweh our way, and they made the golden calf, and which was a grave mistake that Israel did. And so it's not, a, it's not the way that how we want to. At the end of the day, we just want to find um, that mercy. We want to find favor in Yahweh's eyes, you know, that that we, you know, come clean, that we submit our hearts, that we submit ourselves under, you know, under that, the, the Torah of, of Yahweh, you know, to fall in love with Hashem, to fall in love with the Torah, you know, so that Yahweh will bless you and bless your children, your children's children. And you see, and that is why, you know, with Christmas, you know, many people even say, you know, let kids be kids. Let the kids be kids. Let them have fun. But here's the issue. When they grow up, they will, be the, they will say the same thing about their kids. And when they grow up, they will say the same thing about their kids. And so the, that curse will continue for generations to generations and so on and so forth until one cuts it starting with the children. Now, even in the United States today, the presidents and everyone that ha knows about education, they say education is key because the children of the United States are, is the future of the United States. And so this same thing goes here. With our children, it starts with us and our children. Circumcise our hearts, circumcise our minds. Let's surrender unto the heavenly king. Surrender everything, you know, just and leave behind anything that is idolatry. Just how King David, his, you know, he said, 
Heavenly Father, chapter 136, he said, Father, try my heart. Try my heart and see if you find any idolatrous thing in my heart, Father, so that I can remove it. You know, so, you know, and that is the attitude that we have to take. We have to take, you know, is, is not trying to um, be righteous or try to be righteous in our own eyes, but accept do things in Yahweh's, you know, Yahweh's eyes. Amen. And, and one thing he mentioned about the golden calf, what did Aaron say when he was building the altar? He said, tomorrow we will worship Yahweh. And he was referring to the golden calf. And what did Yahweh say to Moses when they were up on the mountain? Yahweh said, go down there because they have corrupted themselves. We're trying to play the, 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 the role of Moses today because we're talking to people who have corrupted themselves with idols and are trying to offer these idols unto Yahweh. And even though they're offering unto Yahweh, Yahweh is not happy, he is not pleased, and he and is not acceptable to him. Yeah, absolutely. So, we started out in the book of Genesis, and now that we're coming to a close, we're going to be coming to the, uh, the last book, which is Revelations. And we're going to talk more about that, the, the drunkenness that the nations have had off of the, um, the, the, the golden cup. And it says, After this I saw an angel come down from heaven. He had a great authority, and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. And with a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling place for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit. A haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. Remember, uh, he wrote, read in Jeremiah 51, they drank of the, um, the golden cup and that's why they became mad. So that's the same thing we see here. For all the nations have drunk of the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Look at, look at this today. We have um, communist countries who don't embrace Christianity as much as other countries, and they still celebrate Christmas. Why? The same reason why this country celebrates it, because it boosts your economy. Absolutely. These are the merchants that they get the riches from, from Babylon's luxuries. You know what I'm saying? So it says, Then I heard another voice from, from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Remember we read earlier when, um, when um, Paul says, What, what um, relationship is there between the temple of God and idols? He said, Come from amongst them, my people. The same thing we're seeing John saying in Revelation. And that's one of the things that we read in Hosea chapter 8, verse 8. It says that Israel was swallowed up by the nations mm -hmm. and, be and, and became like the nations. Exactly. So, come out of her, my people, so that you will not share her sins. Who's her? Babylon. You will not share her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. Now, what's very important to know here are the plagues that Babylon and all those drunken with her wine are going to receive. And we can skip down to verse 8. It says, Therefore, in one day her plagues will overtake her. Death mourning and famine she will be consumed by fire for mighty is Yahweh Elohim who judges her amen amen so this is what's to come to this Babylonian system this mystery um, that, that we're talking about and people think that there's nothing bad about Christmas but it just doesn't look bad but it's not supposed to look bad like um like I said um before and in, in another post uh, I said if the, if the devil came out and told us he was the devil, nobody in, in, in the congregation would follow him. Absolutely. The devil, Satan, is not an enemy of religion. He dwells amongst it. Look at how many pagan traditions have infiltrated uh, what we know today as um, Christianity. Christianity is, uh, the, the early day Christians are Messianic Jews. We see that all the apostles, the disciples, they're all Jewish men who believe in the Messiah. How did we get to the place where we're at today? We have to think about that. How has the devil infiltrated our minds? How have they infiltrated our authorities? The Roman Catholics, the ones who, in, who, who merged pagan religions with uh, um, uh, the, the Word of God. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, and, and, this, and I'm sure you've heard this, you know, that, you know, Satan's greatest trick is to make you believe that he isn't Satan. You know, to make you believe that, you know, he isn't real. And so, you know, if you go to... Um, you know, if you go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, it says that, that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And so, and so this is 
the reason why we're trying to bring truth to you. We're trying to bring the truth because, you know, if even if we go, you know, with December 25th, you know, the Mithras was born on December 25th and it was the winter solstice. Now, if you go and any um, Satanist would know this, if you go to the Satanic calendar, you know that the high, one of the greatest feasts, with, which is a holy Sabbath unto Satan, is the winter solstice. The winter solstice is also known as the Yule celebration. And so we see now how how um you know how embedded we really are with these Babylonian customs, these Babylonian traditions. You know how 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 this is all these uh, Babylonian customs has transcended and still affects us today. You know, yes. it still affects us, you know, today and 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 it, it really is um you know, it's sad, you know, but um, you know, Baruch Hashem, thank the heavenly king, the king of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who is revealing himself to, the, to his people, his chosen ones, among the nations, who is the remnants of Israel, who is Ephraim, the one, the one of the witnesses that will rise up, that will wake up at the sound, you know, at the sound of this um, trumpet, at the sound of the shofar, sounding the alarm, you know. Amen. So brothers and sisters, what we want to just get to you today is that when you see a Christmas tree, don't think of the merry and the merriness and the joy and, and what we see with our eyes. Remember that this is what tormented God's heart since the beginning of the times. Nothing under the sun is new. These things have pagan um, origins. And just like we read in Jeremiah where this uh, uh, idolatrous nation spread their favors on the trees, Let's not spread our favors on the trees. Let's read Yahweh's word and let's see how Yahweh wants to be worshipped. Let's go back to, to the origins. Let's go, let's ask for the old past and walk down it and find rest for our right, souls. Right, right. So uh, we'll have our closing remarks from my from my brother and uh and we'll let you guys go. Yeah, no, um, like he said, you know, let's let's you know, let's do what is called Teshuvah, going back, going back to the original roots, going back to where everything started, you know, like uh, and and you know where the where the king where, how the king wants us you know to to worship him and and how he wants us to to um you know follow his way how he wants us to follow you know the things that we do you know um you know and and, and you know from this point on you know this right all all of this that we brought to you is really the introduction this is just an introduction this is so much more vast than then, then you know we think and that then we we believe and we see because this is just skimming the surface. This is we're just touching the. We're just trying to get your feet wet with where is this coming from? This is so much more vast and it, it's amazing. Um and and but you know what? Praise God! Praise the heavenly King, the King of Israel. That you know He sheds light. You know He sheds light on His people and that He leads us. To walk in light in the midst of darkness. Remember what um you know saw um King David says you know that his word is a lamp you know to my feet. Amen. You know what I mean. So, you know and that and, and that is our sole purpose. Our sole purpose is that you know to share to share with you you know um what Yahweh wants you know from us as servants. Amen. So brothers and sisters, we hope that you enjoyed our presentation today. We put a lot of time and, and effort and research into this so that we can sound the trumpet and, and, and waking up Israel from amongst the nations. And um, if anybody has any questions, uh, inbox us, send us a message, uh, post comments below, and we'll do our best to answer all the questions we can. And, um, and with that, we say shalom. Shalom.